Welcome to week two of public policy economics and analysis. What is going on with the cows? Well, as we will see towards the end of today's lecture, grazing cows on a common pasture are actually central to a big debate about selfishness and altruism and about political institutions and property rights. And those of you who have done the readings, of course, know that I'm referring to the so-called tragedy of the commons. And this tragedy of the commons, the question of public goods and the optimal provision of public goods, and the problem of cooperation or prisoner's dilemma are the core topics of today's lecture. What do we mean by public goods? And how do we distinguish public goods from private goods that we encountered in the last week, like the cookies and the coffee that I can buy. Well, public goods are basically distinguished by two key features. And these two key features are so important that even a baby Mr. Spock from the science fiction world of Star Trek has to learn them in the future. Non-excludability and non-rivalry. Non-excludability and non-rivalry. What do those mean? Well, non-excludability basically just means that once a good has been produced, it is impossible or prohibitively expensive to exclude individuals from enjoying it. The classic example here is national defense. Once a country has decided to put resources into protecting its borders or perhaps deterring attack using a nuclear deterrent, it is impossible to exclude certain groups of people or individuals from benefiting from this good. So even if the British state for some reason were to decide to exclude me from this public good, they wouldn't be able to do it because just by living here, um, I benefit from the, from the, from the national defense provided. Non-rivalry basically refers to rivalry in consumption. So a good that is non-rivalrous is a good where the marginal cost of adding additional individuals, additional consumers, enjoying the good is virtually zero. Mm -hmm. um, we don't impact each other's enjoyment of the good. A good example here is perhaps this lecture video. Mm -hmm. uh, once it has been produced, the cost of broadcasting it to additional people is not zero, but it is very, very low. Another example could be roads, if they are not congested. Once the road has been put in place, lots of people can use the roads, and it doesn't really matter how many people use the, use the road. But of course, once congestion comes into picture, it changes from non-rivalrous to rivalrous consumption of the road. Now, what's the classic example of a good that is non-excludable and non-rivalrous? Well, it's the lighthouse. So. Once a lighthouse has been built, ships or their crews can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, um, they, it is not possible to exclude certain ships from seeing the, the lighthouse that, that, that um, you know, warns sailors of the, of the dangerous cliffs, say. Uh, it is not possible to, to stop people from seeing it. That's the whole point of the lighthouse, of course. Um, and there's also no rivalry in consumption. One ship seeing the lighthouse doesn't mean that the other ship cannot see the lighthouse or is, is somehow impacted by that. Mm -hmm. So lighthouses are the classic example, of course, of a public good. Once they have been provided, it is not possible to exclude the enjoyment, the benefit from, from being warned. And it is also not uh, the, the enjoyment of the lighthouse or the benefit that a ship uh, derives from being warned of the cliffs is not impacted by other ships seeing the lighthouse. And these two dimensions, these two features, excludability and rivalry in consumption, basically allow us to characterize different types of goods. The way these types of goods are usually introduced is a sort of two by two table, non-rivalrous versus rivalrous and excludable versus non-excludable. And this typology works really well as a heuristic device. But we have to keep in mind that these 
features are a continuum. They're continuous variables, if you want. So rivalry in consumption ranges from no rivalry in consumption whatsoever in the lighthouse example, or national defense perhaps, to rivalry in consumption, as we know for private goods. So I have a cookie, I eat it, you cannot also eat the cookie. Um, but there are lots of things that, that sort of fall in the spectrum in between. So take roads as an example. They range from country roads that are sort of empty and my enjoyment of the road, my benefit from driving on the road is not impacted by you also driving on the road. But if you come to London or any other big city, you will know that consumption is rivalrous for goods, for, for, for streets in London. Huh? So congestion means that people in, people's enjoyment of the good of the road impacts each other. Hmm. And the same kind of mechanism applies to excludability. It ranges from impossible to exclude to perfectly possible to exclude, and there are sort of shades in between. Now, what are the types of goods that we're talking about? Well, we've already talked about public goods. So I've mentioned the defense example, and I've mentioned the lighthouse example, which are two really traditional examples. Um, but we can also think about firework displays. If you set up a fireworks display in your neighborhood, um, it will not be possible to stop people from seeing it. And also, it doesn't really matter how many eyeballs are on the fireworks. Um, it doesn't impact your enjoyment of the fireworks, does it? But there are examples of fireworks that are both excludable and rivalrous because of the viewpoints and because it is possible to charge people for accessing those viewpoints. So, for example, London New Year's Eve fireworks, um, there's both rivalry and consumption because lots and lots of people want to stand uh, on the on the side of the Thames and the, the, the authorities, London um, mayor, I think, is actually able to charge people for accessing uh, certain areas. Mm -hmm. So even these sort of classic examples are sometimes not quite right. Um, Another example would be tsunami siren, right? That was set up after the, the devastating tsunami in, 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 in Southeast Asia a few years ago. Um, so me hearing the tsunami siren uh, doesn't impact you hearing the tsunami siren. We can all hear it at once. Um, and it's also not possible to exclude people from hearing the tsunami siren. In fact, making sure everybody hears it is really the point of it. Um, and we can also think about radio broadcasts. Huh? So once a radio broadcast has been has been um, sent, uh, it doesn't really matter how many people are listening to it because the uh, waves are out there, um, and it's also not possible to stop people from listening to the radio broadcast. Okay, I think those are pretty good examples of this this sort of extreme end of the non-excludable and non-rivalry sort of um, continuum. On the other end of the spectrum, if you want, are private goods. Now, private goods are the things we know from last week, from the market. Hmm? Um, you know, private enterprise, private firms produce certain goods, like the cookie or the computer or phone you're watching this on, uh, or your car, and you owning these items or eating the cookie um, definitely excludes other people from using them. Hmm? Once uh, once you have bought the cookies, you're not, you know, you can't just, uh, there's no one else coming and taking your cookies, I hope at least. Um, and there's rivalry in consumption. So once I've eaten the cookie, you can't also eat the cookie. That's maybe something uh, some politicians still have to learn. Um, other examples of private goods are medical treatment. So although medical treatment is often provided free of charge uh, and universally accessible in many countries. These are not really public goods in the in the rivalry and excludability kind of sense. It is possible to stop you from seeing a certain doctor or entering a certain hospital without the right insurance, and America is an example for that. Uh, and there's also definitely rivalry in consumption. So me using the services of a certain um, medical professional stops you from using them, those services at the same time. So doctor's visits are private goods, but they may be provided by the government for other reasons. And we will talk about these distinctions and the question of externalities uh, a lot more next week. Um, and the final example is education. So this course is both excludable only you guys are allowed in, 
although I'm broadcasting parts of it on YouTube. Um, and there's rivalry and consumption. So the more people are in the seminars, uh, the, 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 the more difficult it gets, of course. So these are some examples of private goods. Now, besides these sort of two extreme points, um, we have things on the off diagonal here. Um, and sometimes these are referred to as impure public goods. But I think that's a bit, bit misleading. I think it's best to refer to these uh, with, their, with their sort of specific um, names. And these are common pool resources and club goods. So what are common pool resources? Well, you've already encountered them in the readings. The commons, mm, uh, from the tragedy of the commons, the, the pasture that the herders send their uh, cattle on is uh, an example of a common pool resource, but maybe not part of our experiential world uh, these days. Clean air, if you think about pollution. Mm, um, so it is not possible or very difficult to stop people from, uh, from creating pollution, um, but there's rivalry in consumption. Uh, the more uh, the more industry pollutes the, the clean air, the, the, the more we all have to breathe in toxic air and the more we all suffer from, from the consequences of climate change, for example. Um, we can also think of things like fish in the ocean. Um, so it is not possible to stop trawlers in international waters, mm -hmm. uh, but the depletion of fish stocks around the world is a clear indication that there is in fact rivalry in consumption and it is a big problem, of course, uh, for our planet. Um, river water would be another example where people can access it upstream um, and maybe pollute it or, or, or use it for some purpose for irrigation and the people downstream suffer because of pollution or because of, of, of um, not enough water arriving anymore. And things like uh, New York streets or, or, or to some extent London streets maybe uh, where there is of course rivalry and consumption in the sense that there's congestion but it is difficult to exclude. Why did I say New York streets and not London streets? Well, because in London there's a scheme to exclude people from from using the uh, using the, the the very centre. There's a congestion charge that tries to um, to to congestion charge that tries people uh, to stop people from from using them, or at least recover some of the cost. And what do we have in the other remaining field? Well, these are so-called club goods. These are goods where Rivalry in consumption is actually low. Mm. Uh, adding individual consumers is not very costly or free, but it is possible or easy to exclude people from uh, enjoying it. So classic example are toll roads. Um, so it is possible to exclude people from using a toll road, of course, uh, but as long as there's no congestion, there's not actually rivalry in consumption. There could be many more cars on the road. Cable TV is another example. Uh, many of us um, subscribe to Sky for the football or to HBO if you're in the US. And but once these you know shows and uh, and and um, broadcasts have been produced and are being sent, it wouldn't really matter if you added more consumers to it. But it is easy to to exclude consumers, of course, and to the benefit of the of the cable TV companies, uh, it is possible to charge people for using uh, using those, of course. These online lecture videos are another example, uh, or other online lecture videos, because these ones are put on YouTube, so everyone can see them, but um, other online lecture videos will be restricted to those of you who are uh, who are part of the university or part of a specific, uh, specific class. Huh? Although the actual cost of adding one more uh, eyeball to it, so to say, is zero. Um, we can also think of a zoo, uh, perhaps on a weekday more so than a weekend with, with lots of people and children attending. So a zoo on a weekday, the zoo is there. Um, I have to pay a fee to, to, to get in, um, but my enjoyment of the animals isn't really impacted by, by the enjoyment of the animals from other people. Um, and in some cases, we can think about fire protection. So there's this curious case of uh, fire departments in the US only coming to the rescue of people uh, who paid their local taxes. Um, so while there's usually no rivalry in consumption, mm, uh, not that many fires break out at the same time. So fire department could come to your house. Um, they may be able to exclude people from enjoying it, from, from being protected uh, by them. 
we have seen lots of examples of public goods, club goods, common pool resources, and private goods. So now it's time for you to do a little exercise and come with, up with some examples yourself. Um, so what I want you to do when I tell you to pause the video um, is to sort of look out of the window and think, think a little bit about sort of what are good examples um, that we haven't mentioned for these, for these categories and come up with one example each. And then what I want you to do is open a new browser window and go to Moodle and post your best example, your most original creative example of a public good to the Moodle homework link. But please, non-rivalous and non-excludable. So correct answers only. Um, and hopefully all of your classmates have been posting as well. So you can vote up the best ones, the best examples uh, of public goods. So please pause your video now and um, think about examples of public goods. I hope you posted your best, original, funny, creative example of a public good on Moodle. Why are we talking about public goods? Well, public goods, of course, are a type of market failure. The reason is obvious. If nobody can be excluded and consumers benefit whether they pay for the good or not, why would a private company, a private firm, do us the favor of producing these goods? They can't charge for it and they cannot even recover the cost. On the side of the consumers, if presented with a, with a public good that is being provided anyways, I can access it without paying, why would I pay for it? Hmm. In some markets, we think of this sort of as a moral failure and we call it the free rider problem. But the core issue of not being able to charge users for the public goods and from the perspective of the user, if a good is being provided anyways, why would I pay for it? lead to the missing market for public goods and the market failure. And this is, of course, one of the classic sort of reasons for government intervention. The state can step in, the government can provide public goods and they can charge us to pay for them using taxes. There's one more quirk to the public goods story, though. I told you the story of the lighthouse how it is a public good, non-rivalrous, non-excludable. Um, and today, indeed, most lighthouses are operated by government. But if you look at the history of the lighthouses, in many cases, lighthouses were actually not built by national governments. Lighthouses, in many cases, were built and maintained by those groups of people who operated the local port near the cliffs or whatever the lighthouse wants about. Um, and these could be cities or they could be merchant guilds or private enterprises. So the history of the lighthouse is actually not one of government intervention. It is one of private provision of something that looks like a public good um, and where the provider was indeed able to recover the cost of the good from the core users, the ships that came to this specific port. Now that you've learned about public goods, what's to come in the next videos? Well, first, we'll encounter the problem of cooperation or prisoner's dilemma, which explains why your communal kitchen is always so dirty. We will then watch an obscure British game show, visit soldiers in World War I, and learn what monkeys can teach us about human behavior before working through what Joe Stiglitz tells us is the optimal level of public good production. And we will finally be able to revisit those cows on their beautiful pastures.